So, Jim, just to start with, uh, now OBOR is considered as one of the pilot initiatives by China, which considered as a very probably the major initiatives in this century as called by them. Now, uh, how do you see the role of the financial sector within this OBR initiative? Thank you. It's a very good question. Clearly, what, take for example Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is aware of, of One Belt, One Road initially from government to government projects, right? And that's what got started the previous regime and, and has run up until now. Um, but that's not the way to make it as sustainable as it can possibly be. The best way to do it is through what are called PPPs or, or public-private partnerships where you bring in more components to each opportunity. So the, the public sector is involved, but the private sector becomes involved. And the private sector can be either investors or, or individual companies or banks. Because financing all these things is an issue or it's an opportunity, it depends on how you want to look at it. So, depending on the kinds of structures that will be in place, the more, more realistic, the more strict, the better, the better created, the better structures will attract more capital to, to help finance them. And the role of the financial services industry is very, very significant in supporting that sort of thing. Some of these projects, if they're very, very long-term, and uh, you know, not too um, commercial, may find it difficult to get private money. Others that are much more commercial and have more cl clearer payback periods and, and they're, not, they're, link, they're shorter tenors will very easily uh, be able to raise capital either by banks or from investor base or, or multilateral organizations. So the One Bank, One Road initiative by China, which is, as you pointed out, meant to be the single largest uh, um, globalization initiative in the 21st century, um, something like the Marshall Plan was after the Second World War, is going to make, it's going to offer tremendous amount of opportunities to the financial services industry. And the, those opportunities will de depend uh, by the geographies they're in, it'll depend by the type of projects involved, or the type of services involved, or the type of structures involved. But don't forget that in many cases, the, the pure one, one uh, belt, one road will be a catalyst uh, from which other projects will emerge. Other ancillary investments will emerge. If you, if you build this, there's an opportunity to do that. If you create this, uh, someone else will create that. Because if, if this wasn't here, that couldn't happen. And so the partnership isn't just the project itself. It will be what the project or what the initiative creates for a particular economy that then can likewise be supported by the financial services industry in both a public sense or a private sense or, or an investor base. So it's very exciting and as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, equally I think it's very exciting and will offer many opportunities for both local financial uh, service companies and international. You spoke about the private-public partnership within this initiative, particularly in the financial sector. sector. How do you see this would work out and what are the possible challenges and what are the dynamics? Yeah, in, in a, you know, we're seeing it in, in the Hamban Tota case because in the public piece of that, it's involved the government handing over an asset, land, uh, a location, uh, you know, that sort of thing for a prescribed amount of time. They're going to get it back, right? But but people are, you know, are understandably nervous. 99 years sounds like a long time. I don't know, maybe it's not for you, but for me it is. <laughs> and so um, that's their deal. You give me this for 99 years and I'll make good use of it. I'll get financing, I'll build this, I'll build that. So therein lies some of the challenges. Now, in governments where the laws are very clear, the policies are very clear, and you have some experience, Handing something over in a properly contracted structure isn't a concern because you'll have to give it back. The law says you do and the law will be enforced. But again, if you don't do that frequently or if you haven't done it before, people might wonder and they might think of maybe the guy's never going to give it back, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And so I say it's a learning experience. 
Um, this is a long-term initiative. This is not meant to be a one-year, two-year, three-year thing, right? And I encourage these partnerships, the PPPs as they're called, to get formed. I encourage the dialogue to take place because, you know, if they're done properly, they will be successful. Now, with the One Build, One Road initiative, there'll be much more opportunities for Sri Lankan exporters to tap into global value chains. Then there comes the big role for small and medium enterprises. At the moment, there are certain issues with regarding export finance for these SMEs. How do you see the role of the financial sector by then? As this economy evolves, as the capital, local capital markets deepen, um, you, know, you get a more dynamic stock market, you get a, you get a, a, a local currency, pub, a private sector bond market, for example. And you know, just like in any other economy, the, the, it deepens. People like SMEs will have m access to many more different types of, of credit, right? Today we think of credit as a simple bank loan or something because that's pretty much what's available. But this growth and this investment flow, this uh, access to more export markets and, and more opportunities presupposes everything else is developing around that at the same time. So what should happen is you will see other windows of financing, other types of financing becoming available to entrepreneurs, to people of, you know, don't have as much capital, uh, partnerships of forming, things that enable others to become involved in global supply chains, regional supply chains, or as just, as just uh, ancillary partners or, or value add components to an original idea. The dynamism of this becomes available as the financial service industry becomes more dynamic itself. So when we think of, of, of this and we think of the answer to your question, we have to assume that One Belt, One Road and, and all the government policies and all the other things that are being planned happen some, uh, simultaneously, which will then really uh, create a far more diverse, a far more dynamic market which will find room and space for people of all sizes to become involved. And there are so many examples around the world where that's already happened. So it, it's not something that no one ever seen before. I appreciate that it's new for Sri Lanka, but I believe very, very, very strongly that just get going, you know, open the door, get it started, make that change to the policy that you need to do or make whatever regulation change you need to do and trust that it'll happen because I, I do believe it will. Now uh, another major project that is currently going on is the Colombo Financial City. A yes. uh, lot of people talk about this and see this as opportunity for Sri Lanka to be a part of the financial industry and etc. How do you see this? Okay, it's a very good question and it's also I think kind of misunderstood. What's being created, literally, as we speak, is landmass in front of, you know, the, the shores of, of Colombo, right? A 600-acre piece of property that is meant to have an integrated purpose to it. It's been given many different names. Port City was the first one, maybe. Uh, the Colombo International Financial Center was another one. Now people realize, wait a minute, that's not what that's going to be. And they're, and they're changing the names around, okay? So let me describe it because, you know, our clients are building it and we know, we know quite a bit about it. It's a, it's a new and unique opportunity to create a whole series of types of activities from convention centers to schools to, to um, uh, 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 industry, to, to arts, to services, um, to you know everything, everything you can think of is meant plus residential property and, and everything else, right? So um, inside this territory is also meant to be an opportunity to place some financial services, and with the understanding they'd be kind of considered offshore, they'd be considered as a, a regional spot in this country of Sri Lanka in this strategic area, right, covering perhaps South Asia or covering a, a region. So 
the financial services industry component, let's use that word, of whatever you want to call it, Port City or, 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 or whatever you want to call it, um, is, 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 is true. And it's probably going to be some of the first buildings that they erect starting in end of 2018, 19, and so forth. Um, the legislation for that, the actual strategic plan for that is still in the drawing. Um, a lot of consul cons consultation has taken place. I have been a, a part of some of the visits of, of people and some of the think tanking and that sort of thing. They've consulted the major centers, Dubai, uh, Qatar in the Middle East, Hong Kong, Singapore in, in, in out here. And they're consulting um, you know, with lots of people to get different ideas about different kinds of structures. Um, in order that as Colombo and as Sri Lanka grows as something more than just a country and it becomes, uh, have an important role in the region, an important role in the One Belt, One Road, an important role in, 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 in this part of the world because it's in such a strategic place, it can do the same for the financial services industry. Perhaps provide uh, an offshore banking opportunities, say for South Asia, uh, which are very large economies. You've got Pakistan, you've got India, you've got Bangladesh, and, and so forth. Um, so it's very realistic to consider that project. That, that It's a PPP, remember? It's the first PPP. People forget that. It's a big PPP. It's going to be $15, $20 billion by the time it's done, right? That first PPP is going to have a component of financial services in it. And, and they're in that uh, stage now of trying to figure out and decide exactly how to shape it and how to form it. And obviously the government will, will, will play an extremely important role in, in making that decision. I think what's important is to know what the plan is, to know that it will become a reality along with many other things in that reclaimed land but it's too early to, to say exactly what it might be. One idea, for example, a simple idea, is that Chinese bank or Chinese financial centers could look at this as a Western hub, you know, for, for the, you know, from the, for Asia. In Asia, there's like the Western point. So they might put, they might put a, a bank or two in this offshore location to oversee other investment flows, other investment activity in, in the region as an example. So, but that's an example. It's, uh, I, I, am not, I am not privy to any specific knowledge of, of, of what's happening, only hear the same stories that other people do, but uh, it's definitely gonna play a role as one component of many components that will be a part of this port city, uh, whatever you wanna call it, a very unique and very, very forward-looking um, PPP. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. It's nice, nice doing the meeting you and talking with you.